Whoa, my hair is looking crazy today. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So in this week's video, we're gonna be carrying on where we left from last week, and that's continuing to modify the round collar mill. So last week we got all the upright part done, and today we need to get the part which attaches to the bearings over to the head. So I'm gonna jump straight on with that now. I've already laid out the part that I need and all it's left to do really is to mill that. So let's crack on with it. To start with then, we've got this three inch angle iron, which I want to use to brace between the upright and the head. So to do that, we need a way of attaching onto the bearings. To begin with, what I've done is I've laid out the bearing on here, drew round the holes and made a mark out in here. So my plan is to mill these and I want these on like an elongated slot so when it's in place, I can adjust it side to side to get that fit perfect. So I think I'm going to start with drilling out these 6mm holes. Once I've drilled them out, I'm then going to elongate them with a milling bit, just to make it a little bit easier on the end of the mill and not wear it out as quick. Right, so I've got all my holes drilled now where I want them. By doing it this method, it allows me to elongate the holes to a set amount each time. And it's also going to reduce the wear on my end mill, because I won't be plunging into cuts every time. I'll be dialing in depths of cut when I'm in the clearance holes. So, I've got quite a few holes to elongate and mill out. So, I better get on with that now, because I imagine this is going to take me quite a while. So we're just making a start on our final pass now. I've already done the three sides to this cutout and I'm just finishing off the last fourth one. So how I've done this is I've been dialing in a 0.5mm depth of cut every time I get to one of the clearance corners and once I've dialed in the depth of cut I then go back over it. So this is quite a repetitive process but it's going to give me a really accurate cut with no need to clean it up on the mill as if I was to use a grinder or something like that. <coughs> and another reason I'm using this method is it's just going to give me really clean inside angles. I'm not going to have any overcuts from a grinder. Hopefully you should only have about two or three more passes left on this. One more pass to go then. Yeah, this is looking good now. This is looking really good now. I have to just snap that last little bit off. Uh, let's use a screwdriver. Whee! There goes the middle. Just quickly clean that cut up. Right, there we have our middle. So now we've got the middle all cut out. I need to now elongate these holes here and we should start to resemble something that's gonna act as our brace to go from our upright bearings across to our head. So coming up to the last hole again and we're just doing exactly as we did before, going to each clearance hole and dialing in a depth of cut of 0.5. So once this hole's done we can drive fit our bearing in the shaft and we'll see if we're going to be able to get the sort of movement that I intended when I came up with this idea. So because these holes are so much closer together, this process is a lot quicker than before with the centre hole.
Only a couple more mil left to go now. And I believe that's all the way through. Just go back and clean up the edges. And ladies and gentlemen, we are done. So I'm just going to quickly give this a clean up and deburr, and we'll head over to the bench for a dry fit, I think. So this is how our part has turned out, and got to say it's ended up pretty well actually. First time really doing any work like this on the mill, and I've got to admit, I've quickly dry fit this off camera, but I'll show you again in a minute. Everything seems to fit together absolutely lovely. So let's quickly take it over to the vise. Two seconds. Right. So that's going to be attached onto our head. And here we've got the bearing carrier, which. That will bolt down there. The shaft goes in there. And it's got movement to adjust it side to side. And I've got to admit, there's not a lot of play back and forward which should be really good. So I now need to measure this and get a rough idea of how long I want that. And then the next thing I think to do is cut this down on the bandsaw, square it up to another piece of metal that I can weld to, and then we're about ready to attach this onto our head. So as you've just seen, I've got everything assembled and on the mill now, and it all seems to be working really well. I've operated it a few times up and down now, and I'm really happy with the results. So just a little test I want to do to see how accurate this is going to make any future milling and drilling operations, is I want to operate it up and down with a DTI gauge on the quill, and see how much movement we've got. Because this is going to determine how accurate I'm going to be able to do parts in the future. So it's something I need to know moving forward. So the setup that we've got here is I've got a DTI gauge. Let's just set this to zero, roughly. So I've got a DTI gauge set to zero and the nib is going into the keyway on the quill. So to begin with, I'm going to go up and once I'm up to the full travel that I've got here, I'm then going to come back down again and we'll see what sort of deviation we get in measurements. So here we go. So it seems to be fluctuating a little bit. Not massive though, which is good. So it fluctuated a little bit at the start there, but I'm going to say that was probably Overall, we're looking at about 0.2 millimetres of deviation, which is really good, actually. So let's just come back down and see how that fares. So coming back down seems a lot more steady just because we've got gravity on our side. And we're back down to where we began, roughly. 
So looking at the gauge on that, we're about 0.06 millimetres away from where we started. So in my opinion, for what I'm going to be doing, that's not a lot of difference. So I'm pretty happy with that. So overall then, I think that's a pretty good result really for this mill. Um, we've got about 0.2 millimetre deviation going up and then about 0.1 millimetre deviation coming back down. So for a round collar mill, that's a really good result. It now means that I can raise the head and lower the head without really having to worry about the position of it. Where before, every time I had to raise it, I was putting a DTI gauge on the quill and making sure I was in the same position as I left off. Where now with this modification, I feel pretty confident to raise the head and not have to worry about that. Of course, we're going to have to see how this gets on over the next few weeks. So maybe in a couple of weeks, I'll give you guys some feedback. Just in case any of you guys are thinking about doing this modification, it might give you a better idea whether or not this is going to be suitable for you. That about sums up this video today then, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this modification on the mill. I actually really like doing modifications on the equipment I've got in the workshop here. I've done loads on the lathe, and now I've got the mill. I'm starting to do some on this. And it's something I really enjoy doing on the channel. So if you want to see more future modification videos like this, please hit that thumbs up button. Maybe drop a comment below as well saying what sort of modifications you'd like me to see within the workshop. And I'll have a think about it and maybe do them in future videos. Other than that guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.